So hands up if you don't know what the concept paleo means. Hands higher. Okay, about half the room. Now, sometimes, pe sometimes people criticise concepts around diet and nutrition. But if you don't, if you don't package something, people don't understand it. Now, if I said to you, you're going to change your diet, or you to go and eat healthier, would you, would you know what to do? Because eating healthy is a bit of a broad term, isn't it? And if you don't know what healthy is, you don't really know what to change. So we have the pigeonhole thing. So there's a, there's a vegan diet, there's a vegetarian diet, there's a paleo diet, there's a primal diet, gluten-free, there's hundreds of diets. But if I told you these words, you could fit a concept in these words. So you know that when I say vegan, you're only allowed to eat fruit and veg and, and basically pigeon. But you kind of know what to do. So I'm going to bracket this theory, this paleo, because you'll understand what it is. The paleo concept is, in a nutshell, that you're not going to eat anything that's kind of man-made or processed. Now for me, that's a very simple thing to understand. You know, you're not going to eat anything that some idiot has prepared in the lab. So paleo is going to have you know, things like meat, vegetables, fruit. The basic paleo concept is that you wouldn't eat grain-based food legumes or dairy. Now I don't believe that people shouldn't eat legumes or dairy, but they should. I wholeheartedly agree that our diet should be pretty devoid of grains. So when I say that, I don't think many people should eat cereals or bread or pasta or overproduced rice and all this all these things. And I'll get into why later. Okay? So whenever I create a diet plan for someone, right at the core element, I'm going to put them on this paleo concept. And I'm going to show you later the basic diet that I prescribe for most people, and that will be that concept. And then I might plus dairy on top, because I think anything in your diet, you should test your tolerance. You can tell me, Ben, I've heard nuts are really healthy. But if you're intolerant to nuts, then they're not healthy for you. Okay? So when I like dairy, it's one of the most commonly tested diet we have. So I write dairy with that advocate. If it's okay for you, then have it. So there's our first variable. Our second one is intolerances. So on top of this concept I'm going to outline soon, I then want to find out if you've got any intolerances. Now when I, I told you the story that when I lost five stones, I couldn't get the last stone off. One of the key reasons was I was eating food that I was intolerant to. So I wasn't really eating wheat, but I was still eating a little bit of gluten called rice. And it took me two years to work out that I was fully gluten intolerant, and I had to end up cutting up rice. And as soon as I did that, the last stone just went, gone. Water retention, energy was clear, but all of it. If you are eating something you're intolerant to, you're always creating a state of inflammation in your gut. In a nutshell, shit isn't going to work. You can't work optimally, physiologically, you're constantly inflamed in your intestinal tract. The gut controls the whole body, which I'll elaborate on later. So you need to find out if you've got any intolerance. It's really, really, really powerful. Now this point's kind of going to tie into the rest of it, but sleep. If you don't sleep properly, you can't, you can't self-assess anything that's going wrong. Like, you could tell me that you're tired. I don't know if it's, that's the influence of your diet, or you've just had a crap night's sleep. So you've got a diet of people sleeping. We are beasts that operate in the sun cycle. The more you push outside the sun cycle, the more your body is going to rebel, physiologically. <clears throat> We've only started living in houses and all the rest of it, but I don't know, there's, there's pigeonhole in 200 years, a lot of the time. You know, way back, we would have, you know, someone would have gone down, we would have had dinner, family time, gone to bed. This concept of staying up late and pushing the body harder and harder and pushing it to do more things in a modern environment is only a new thing that our body just hasn't catched up. So sleep has got to be optimal. For me, if you want to sleep optimally, I kind of tell people between 10 and 6 or 10 and 7 a.m. So anyone I work with, ideally, I'm like, right, I want you to up from bed at 10, I want you to sleep by 10.30. Okay. And 
that might mean you have to stop watching so much shit TV. So, I'm going to talk about intolerances, but I'm then going to, the four branches, you've got to find out how well your gut's working. Because if your gut doesn't work properly, you don't work. They call it, in the medical industry, they call it the second brain, because it controls everything. Your serotonin lives in your gut, your immune system lives in your gut, everything comes from here. So you can see how everything that goes in here is going to radiate, radiate a reaction across the whole of your physiology. So you might have even cleared out all the intolerances, but your gut still might not work. You might have poor enzyme activity, you might have low hydrochloric acid in your gut. All these things need to be fixed. You might have an intolerance, and I would hypothesize that over a period of time, if you fix the gut, you can cure the intolerance. So that's what I kind of did with my gut. I can kind of handle gluten now, whereas before it would just like flatline me, I'd get blown in and all the rest of it. Now I can handle small exposures and I'm absolutely fine, it's because I've aggressively fixed my gut. Um, so on top of gut health, I then want to look at the immune system. Because that controls a lot of what we do, fights on bugs, bacteria. Then I'm going to get a little bit geeky. So now you can see how I'm getting a little bit more specific. I would then only start to look at it once omega 3 and 6 balance. Like, probably about two years ago, the industry it was a really sexy thing. Like, if I had to take fish oils and look at their omega 3s and all the rest of it. But, you know, all those things are, are null and void if all the, all the stu other stuff is wrong. Like you're just kind of throwing pills in the, in the hope that something's going to work. You know, you can't you can't take omega threes and combat inflammation if you're eating inflammation all day long in the form of cereals and bread. You know, for example, if you're gluten intolerant, you know, you keep eating cereals and bread and all that stuff. You can't combat inflammation if you're constantly eating it. It's like taking paracetamol for a headache. You know, paracetamol isn't a cure; it's just patching the symptom why you've got a headache. So now I'm going to start getting more specific. So this is how I'm building up working with an individual. I then account for their body type. Now I'm going to expand on this properly later. So there's three rough body types, ectomorph, bendomorph, metomorph. They all have slight indications on how I would create a diet for that person. I like, there's not seven rises, but nine. It's, I've got four people. Um, so now, only now, I'm going to start looking at someone's goals. Because your goal isn't really important if the body doesn't work. Because a lot of the time, if I make your body work, your goal is achieved. Like, a lot of people chase weight loss rather than health. I bet a lot of the time, if you chase optimal health, your body will just become lean as default. Like your body doesn't need fat tissue. A lot of the time, fat is toxic, and toxins are stored in fat tissue. So if you make the body really healthy, it goes, I don't need that anymore. So make the body really healthy, and then the, the rest falls into place. And then only then I might look at macros, calories. 90 to 95% of the diet plans I write won't have any calorie guidelines in it. I don't care. From the perspective that a lot of the times you eat the right things, everything just falls into place. Like you don't need to micromanage your diet to that point. I also don't want to teach people a, a rigid structure in the fact that, oh, I can't eat that because it doesn't fit my 600 calorie breakfast or I can eat. For me, that's not healthy. We're not, we're not designed to do that as creatures. I don't want to weigh my food, I don't want to measure my food. Most of People that I work with don't, need to, don't want to do it. But there are instances where people do need to do it. Oh, okay, you're a physique competitor, okay, you need to get things right. Now we need to dial everything in. Okay, everything needs to be a little bit more scientific. But for the 90% of people, it doesn't need to be scientific. You know, for 90% for of athletes, it doesn't need to be overly scientific. You know, they need to know that I need to eat roughly that and that amount of vegetables or whatever for breakfast. Cool, eat that. Don't weigh it, just go with appetite. You need to bring carbs in post-training. Cool. You need some carbs post-training. Don't, don't weigh. You know, just look at 
say a physical part, have a physical. Yeah. So hopefully I'll teach you a framework where you don't have to micromanage your diet, because I think it's kind of unhealthy. Does that make sense? Cool. So, on my website, when people sign up for something, <coughs> like a nutrition plan, it will say, what's your goal? Never, ever does anyone write one goal. Everyone wants to, like, become lean, super cute, all the rest of it. Please focus on probably one thing at a time, because unless you're clever enough, you won't be able to achieve um, multiple goals. You know, a lot of people want to achieve, they want to get lean and put a muscle at the same time. And unless you know a lot about nutrition, you probably don't know how to work that out yourself. So you've either got to pay someone to work with them or become really knowledgeable with nutrition. So follow one diet, I've got one goal in the other. Right? People, people got guys will always sort of go, oh, so I, so I cut or bulk and all the rest of it. I'm like, hang on, who wants to be overweight? Most people don't want to be overweight. So get lean and then focus on like your other goals, your performance goals, your strength goals. You know, a lot of people in this room will probably have quite specific goals. So you'll kind of notice with my angle of this seminar is that I call myself a performance nutritionist in the fact that I try and make your body perform better. Regardless of where you are, whether you're an athlete or a stay-at-home mum after pregnancy, your body's got to perform and I want to upregulate that performance. Sports nutrition and performance nutrition in the past is all like, what's the, what's the best protein shape or should I have Lucasade or Powerade or and all those sort of things. They're, they're like the minute, they're like the one to five percent. Performance nutrition is all about working from the inside out. Like, I want to make your gut work, because if your gut works, your body will work. I want to make your brain work, because if your brain works, you work. I want to make your heart work more efficiently, because then you'll work more efficiently. So we're, we're approaching everything from the inside out. 